Good morning. <laughs> hurry, hurry. Good morning. Welcome to church this morning. We are absolutely delighted that you have come to join us here in our building, even in this weird, ridiculous way, and also at home for those that are sitting on their sofas with a cup of tea. Um, you are very welcome to our gathered worship this morning. It was amazing. When I opened the curtains this morning, I thought, oh, chings, couldn't see a thing. It was thick with mist. And then as I came to church, the sun was shining, the sky was blue. And that reminder that we see God's love shining. And as God love shines, it burns through all the clouds and we see the beauty of God at work. We have a few announcements this morning. As ever, the um, links for today's services go out with a reminder of what our notices are. So do take a look at that. Um, we've got various things. The knitting of mice is brilliant. Some mice were delivered on Thursday. And you know, I've grown quite fond of them. I think I'm going to find it really hard to pass these three things on. They're adorable. So thank you for those who have been knitting. And keep it up. I've emailed the girl to find out where we're at regarding numbers and timescales, so I'm sure she'll be in touch and I'll keep you posted. But what a beautiful ministry that is to give all these little ones a little mouse to care for. And I promise I'll hand them in. As tempting as it is to keep, I've heard a few grandchildren say to grannies, can I have one of those? So I'm feeling I can relate. Um, also, uh, we've got an announcement here. I just think, I mean, who just loves getting a letter? It's just the best when you get a letter with a stamp on it. It's just brilliant. I don't get them very often, but I get very excited when I do. Um, and so if you do have any stamps, um, then please do hand them in. It's just brilliant that these can be used for a good cause. And so um, the Church of Scotland has this 2021 stamp appeal, which is working towards the Women's Development Centre in Sri Lanka. How brilliant that what comes through our door can make a difference to women in Sri Lanka. So do keep them, find a wee pot beside your door maybe and you can rip them off straight away and hand them in. Now, I had a great time at Families at Four. We always have a ton of fun on our fortnightly meetings. And when we were looking at Families at Four, we were celebrating the ascension and that might seem quite a complicated thing for us to get our heads around, but we had great fun doing it. So we decided that this week we would look at the ascensions. We don't want the grown-ups to feel like they're missing out. And you are missing out a little bit because this was our fabulous craft that we made last week, where we have Jesus, beautifully coloured in, disappearing into the clouds. How cool is that? Um, so the kids had great fun making that last week. And just so you know, in case you do feel left out, we have some extra packs. So if you're feeling creative or if you have a neighbor or a grandchild that you think, do you know what, I bet they'd love to make Jesus disappearing into the clouds. Um, we have a pack of them left over and I'll leave it on the pew so we can see visually Jesus going into the clouds. It's brilliant. Now... As we come to worship, last week we read from Matthew 6, and I wanted to continue in Matthew, in Matthew 7. Verse 7 says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. We gather this morning, many of us seeking God for his peace, for his healing, for his help. Many of us knocking with questions. Today, as we gather, we can know that our Father is here and opens the door to us. Let us pray. Father, thank you for the beauty of this day. Thank you for the beauty of one another. And thank you for the beauty of faith which we lean on as our strength and as our salvation. Holy Spirit, come and be with us in all that takes place in our time together. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Let us listen together to our first song, My Jesus, My Saviour.
It is my great pleasure to invite John Jack to come and do our reading for us this morning. We love when lots of people are able to contribute in worship. This is certainly not a one-person show, but obviously with all the restrictions, that makes it really difficult, but we are really delighted to have one of the members bring today's reading in um, because I don't know who's going to be signing up for each week, it's really hard to know who can do the reading. So don't be alarmed if you get a phone call having signed up for church. It may not be that there's no room for you. It may be that you're being asked to do a reading. Thank you. Uh, this morning's reading is taken from the first chapter of Acts, reading from verse 1 through verse 11. Dear Theophilus, in my first book, I wrote about all the things that Jesus did and taught from the time he began his work until the day he was taken up to heaven. Before he was taken up, he gave instructions by the power of the Holy Spirit to the men he had chosen as his apostles. For 40 days after his death, he appeared to them many times in ways that proved beyond doubt that he was alive. They saw him and he talked with them about the kingdom of God. And when they came together, he gave them this order. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift I told you about, the gift my father promised. John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When the apostles met together with Jesus, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time give the kingdom back to Israel? Jesus said to them, The times and occasions are set by my Father's own authority, and it is not for you to know when they will be. But when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will be filled with power, and you will, and you will be witnesses for me in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. After saying this, he was taken up to heaven as they watched him, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They still had their eyes fixed on the sky as he went away, when two men dressed in white suddenly stood beside them and said, Galileans, why are you standing there looking up at the sky? This Jesus, who was taken from you, into heaven will come back in the same way that you saw him go to heaven. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading from his holy word. Amen. Brilliant. Thank you so much. It was just brilliant sitting listening to that. Thank you so much for that. We're going to listen now together to our next song of worship, Lord, I Lift Your Name on High, a song that really talks about how Jesus came from earth and then returned to heaven. We did a slightly different version of this at Families in Four, which involved some of the best dancing I have ever seen in a long time. Seeing as we're not allowed to sing, the kids made full use of their bodies. Do not panic. You are allowed to remain seated. If you want to get up and dance, let me tell you, I'm not going to stop you. However, um, let's listen together to this song, Lord, I Lift Your Name on High.
feast of the ascension is often neglected in the Christian calendar. The intensity of Lent leads to the joyous celebrations of Easter. And then we tend in our calendar to pick up with the party at Pentecost. And somehow the ascension is often left out. I wonder if that's because it's quite a tricky one for us to get our heads round. What is the clear message that it gives to the church? Essentially, the ascension is about waiting. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't like waiting. I think of myself as a reasonably patient person, but waiting absolutely drives me mad. Every day we spend time waiting. Waiting on the kettle to boil, waiting on a document to upload, waiting for the washing machine to finish its load so we can quickly get it out before the rain starts, waiting for the weekend, waiting for summer, waiting for Nicola Sturgeon's next announcement, waiting for your second vaccine, waiting for a hug. This year, more than ever, we have spent a lot of our time waiting. I don't know about you, but I find it really hard to do anything else when you're in that space of waiting. I find it really hard to concentrate. I find it difficult to focus on something else when you're just waiting to get over whatever it is that's happening. Ryan has his football training three nights a week out at Ormiston and parents still aren't allowed to get out their cars. So I have an hour and a half waiting for him to finish his training. Now you would think, ah, that's a great chance to, you know, do some reading, or you could make some phone calls, or you could take your laptop with you and do bits and bobs. But somehow, I just can't seem to concentrate on anything. I kind of start something, or I'll take my laptop, but I've not charged it, and I just, that time just seems to get completely wasted. It's almost like the waiting seems to drain my energy. I wonder if that's how the disciples felt. I wonder if they felt in that weird limbo time, Jesus, who had been walking with them, who had taught them so much, who had died and then remarkably had returned, had conquered death, had come back to them. Now they looked to the sky as he was once more taken from them and back into heaven. It really made me smile when we read in our passage today, the men in white who appear, why are you looking at the sky? 
Now, I think if one of my friends had just been lifted up into the clouds and disappeared, I think I would be gazing upwards in complete disbelief. I don't imagine myself just, you know, looking in my handbag to find something. You would be absolutely looking in the sky. You'd be completely amazed at what had just taken place. How unusual that these men would say, why are you still looking in the sky? Could it be that in those words there's a challenge for us? The disciples were told not to be keeping their gaze upwards, but to be looking around them, to be facing what was taking place on earth. They had been given a commission. They'd been instructed that they were going to be Jesus' witnesses. With the men in white saying, Right, now it's your turn. This is not a time for gazing upwards, wondering where Jesus has gone. You have a job to do. Now is a time of action. And this is where the waiting comes in. Because Jesus, who had just left dramatically into heaven, was telling them to wait. They'd had baptism of water. Now they needed to get themselves ready for a different kind of baptism. They had to wait in Jerusalem for the Holy Spirit. They were getting ready to truly become Jesus' witnesses, not just in Jerusalem, not just in the surrounding areas, but to the ends of the earth. <sighs> Quite a commission. I wonder how they felt. I wonder if some of them were thinking, yes, this sounds amazing. I am ready. I wonder if others thought, oh my goodness, this sounds horrendous. Me? I can't do this. I'm sure the disciples, as with each one of us, have a range of emotions. For us here in Bonnie Rig Parish Church, there has been a long season of waiting. We have sensed God's calling to be his witnesses, but like those disciples, we're having to wait. I read it described as the ascension is a period of waiting, about an interim time, about life after someone significant has gone, about experiences of uncertainty. It made me think of the church here. As your minister of many years retired, you went into a season of waiting. June joined you in that interim time. And then as you waited for the ever long process of getting a new minister, the burdens arrived at the start of 2020 and we began our new journey together as a family. And then, as you all know, the entire country went into a period of waiting. The nation instructed to go home, to wait till it was safe. It seems we have been together in a very long period of waiting. My daughter, Christina, confessed to me the other day that although she knows she shouldn't, sometimes... When she starts a new book, she goes to the last chapter, <sighs> reads the last few pages, just to make sure everything's going to work out. I wonder if we can relate to that confession. Are you ever tempted to do that? Oh, no, please tell me it's still last till the end of the book. Oh, my goodness. I can't wait to find out. Does your curiosity drive you mad? You just want to see how things are going to end up. While it's human to crave resolution, and we may desperately want to read that last chapter just so we can sleep at night, the ascension is an opportunity for us to sit with the story, to not rush ahead, to be in that space. It's a time where, like the disciples, 
we can dwell in that in-between space. Instead of pressing fast forward, what does it mean for us as God's people to experience a time of waiting? I've already confessed that I'm not a fan of waiting. And Richard can confirm that I was absolutely hideous when I was pregnant, waiting for the arrival of both Ryan and Christina. One of the things that really kept me going through those really long, long weeks was this lovely newsletter that each week used to give me an update on what was happening inside what size the baby was, what bits of its body are developing. It was amazing, and it kept me focused. It takes 40 weeks for a reason. There's so much going on in the womb that this little baby is forming. It's a process that can't be rushed. As a church, you may feel like you've been in a long period of waiting, but I feel confident that during this time, God has absolutely been at work, individually and corporately. God has been developing us, been birthing new things within us. I truly believe that in this time of waiting, seeds have been planted, seeds of faith, seeds of vision. And I honestly believe that for us as a church, this time of waiting has allowed us to dream, has allowed us to reflect. And just as the disciples were instructed to wait, this has not been a fruitless time for us. Quite the opposite. I think God has been doing a lot over this time of waiting. The disciples' eyes were firm, fixed, were fixedly, ugh, the disciples' eyes were firmly fixed on Jesus. But they were discovering that they had a job to do. Having followed Jesus' footprints, they were now realizing that God was going to be using their words, their skills, their personalities to bring the kingdom of heaven to earth. Let me finish with a famous prayer of Teresa of Avila. God of love, help us remember that Christ has no body but ours, no hands but ours, no feet but ours. Our eyes are to see the needs of the world. Ours are the hands with which to bless everyone. Ours are the feet with which he is going to go about doing good. I'm not suggesting for a minute that this is easy. But now as we listen to our next song together, a song entitled Ascension, it speaks of our call to climb the mountain. The lyrics say, here in our hearts, Lord, we are waiting for something that's far beyond what we have seen or heard. What are you waiting for? What might God say to you in this space of waiting? Something amazing A moment when heaven touches earth Here in our hearts Lord, we are waiting For something that's far beyond What we have seen or heard
I feel almost guilty having a comfy chair up here. I know these pews are so uncomfortable and so well done for enduring the time that we spend together on them. Now, you maybe don't know, but this Sunday is National Sports Sunday. Now, it may not come as a huge surprise that I am not massively sporty. However, as you've already heard, my life is pretty much dictated by sport. We've got Ryan's football and Christina's at Bonnie Rig Rose playing football this morning. And sport is so an important part of every community. Sport plays a massive part in our nation's life. And so today on National Sports Sunday, a day when the church recognizes the role that sport plays, we wanted to take time to pray specifically for this area in our community. I know there are a great many things that we can be praying for, and we will include some of them. But I did think it was important to remember the sporting community. All those who have been affected by the pandemic. All those who need the gym for their own mental well-being. Those whose friendships are formed in the games that they play together. Those that need to have a golf club in their hand to enjoy a good walk. Sport is so important to our lives. So you have complete permission during our prayers to keep your eyes open. <gasps> it's amazing. We are going to have some images from around um, Bonnyrigg, different badges, different places. They'll not completely flow with where we're taking the prayer, but just we're going to use some images of just a little bit of the role that sport plays in this community here as we pray for God's blessing, it is a huge, huge honour for me to be the sports chaplain at Bonnie Rig Rose. And the training that sports chaplains do around the country is amazing. The way that chaplains can be part of these teams and clubs' life and be witnesses just as Jesus has instructed them. Let us pray together. Father, we thank you for the gift of sport, for the fitness, for the friendships that come from it, for the sense of community, engagement and fun. We know this year has taken its toll. For those who take part in sport as a living, for those who need sport and exercise to keep well, it's been hard on many to have our gyms and swimming pools closed. We've missed the friendships that meeting together allows. We thank you for all the activities that take place in this community of Bonnyrigg and wider. For the various football clubs, rugby clubs, gymnastic groups, horse riding, bowls, badminton, tai chi, the golf clubs, the list goes on. In the silence, we pray a prayer of blessing on the activities close to our hearts, the ones that we like to take part in, or our children, or our grandchildren. We name them now to you, Lord God. Father, thank you that you are interested in every part of our life. Thank you that you care deeply for every corner of this community. And this morning, on National Sports Sunday, we remember the sporting community, the work of sports chaplains throughout Scotland and the rest of the UK. Build that work up for your glory that they would be witnesses to your kingdom. Father, we pray that as your church, we would not feel threatened by the role of sport 
often taking place on a Sunday. But rather, we would find ways to partner, ways to bless the role of sport in our community and to celebrate all those that are involved. We know that for many, sport is a place of escape. But today, in our prayers, we remember this world with all its great needs. Father, this morning, we pray for India. Bring your healing. We pray for Israel and Palestine. Bring your healing. We pray for our own nation as we tentatively come out of lockdown. Bring your healing. And we pray for those we know, those closest to us who need to know your healing touch. And once more, we name them to you. Lord God, we rejoice in your greatness and power, your gentleness and love, your mercy and justice. Enable us by your spirit to honour you in our thoughts and words and actions, to serve you in every aspect of our lives. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore.